Welcome to my favorite video that I've ever made on my YouTube channel. So this is not something that I'm super excited to talk about. I feel like this is definitely a subject that people try to avoid when possible, but I'm just going to kind of get into it. I'm going to try to just tell the story of exactly what happened, which led me to where I am today and give you guys everything from start to finish because I know a lot of people have had a lot of questions. The gist is that I have HPV and cervical dysplasia precancer cells on my cervix as a result of HPV. 80% of sexually active people will have HPV at some point in their life. I did not know of that. I thought HPV was this thing that was super rare and it was super embarrassing. And like for me, I never wanted anyone to know. And I remember telling my dad for the first time and I felt so scared to tell him when I had shared this whole experience. I was like, oh my gosh, pretty much every adult is guaranteed to get HPV at some point in their life. The thing is that most people don't know. How this whole thing happened was one month last year, maybe let's say June, I realized that I had some skin tags down there, which I thought was totally normal because I had had them on my armpit. They run on both sides of my family. And so I wasn't really too concerned about it. I had an appointment at the dermatologist to get them removed. When I had got to the dermatologist, she let me know that they were not skin tags, but she would remove them. They were genital warts. They looked and appeared exactly as a skin tag. They were very, very tiny. So she did a little numbing injection, removed them, said she would get them sent in to have them double checked that it was was what she thought it was. So they had given me a call back a few weeks later, said they got the results and it was exactly what they expected, which means I have HPV. She referred me back to my OB and said, you need to be checked for cervical cancer because that is one of the things that does come with HPV. I scheduled an appointment with my OB and they had to do a pap. Called me back a few weeks later and said, it was abnormal, we have to do a colposcopy, which is where they do the biopsy and check to see kind of what the cells are. They had pretty much told me at that time, if you have the genital warts HPV, that means that you don't have the cervical cancer HPV. So they pretty much at that point ruled it out because having that means you don't have that. And so I was not too nervous and they were not too nervous and said there's nothing you need to really worry about. Unfortunately, the time in between, in between the pap and the colposcopy was like six months because I had scheduled my colposcopy and in July, the end of July, and instead of getting it done, I ended up scheduling my tummy tuck revision, and so I skipped it, and I meant to reschedule, but kind of never got back to it, and I was kind of nervous to go back anyways, and we all know how that goes. So I had my colposcopy, which was, it wasn't too painful getting the biopsy, but then they pour a solution over your cervix, which is super painful. That was definitely like putting vinegar on an open wound, and it burned really, really bad. They said, you know, per what we've seen, there's really nothing that lit up or anything like that. We're thinking it's gonna be fine. So I got my colposcopy results back. So I called and they were like, uh, okay, the doctor is not in today, but we'll have her call you tomorrow. And I was like, okay. So tomorrow comes and then they call back and they're like, hi, um, we need you to come in today. We need you to come in right now. And I'm like, what? I'm thinking like there is either two possibilities in this circumstance. One, I have cervical cancer and I'm going to have to get a hysterectomy. It's either that or I'm about to die. With the tone of voice this lady had on the phone, it was like, it's really bad. She went really dark. So we stopped everything we were doing, drove to Tampa, talk to the lady and she's like, you know, I'm sorry about that. You know, I could have told you on the phone. Um, there was just some miscommunications and my boyfriend's like, what the heck? Like miscommunications, we thought she was dying. And she's like, yeah, sorry about that. And so she's like, so here's the situation. You don't have cancer, but you do have precancerous cells. And it's just one of those things that we would rather be safe than sorry. And so we just need to go ahead and schedule what's called a LEAP procedure, L-E-E-P. And what they do is they're gonna basically take a portion of your cervix, like one of the layers of your cervix, 
and they're gonna basically take it out to make sure that we get any sort of those cells out. It's the best thing that you can do. Um, unfortunately, the side effects of the procedure are that there is a possibility when you do decide to have another baby that you will miscarry, and the other possibility is that you will have preterm birth because it will give you a weak cervix or what they call an incompetent cervix, preterm birth, and as early as like 20 weeks, that's what she said, and we're like, what? There's not really a survival rate for a baby born at 20 weeks and me and my boyfriend Obviously if you guys saw our relationship Q&A, we really want to have more kids And so for us, we're looking at each other like no freaking way and we're asking what the alternatives are And she's like, this is really like the procedure that you need and I'm like, well, this is a lot to think about Can you know if we wanted to have another kid could we have one now so that you know, at least we could have another kid and not have to worry later down the road. And she's like, no, because if you do do that and you get pregnant, when you become pregnant, your immunity is lessened. And then there's a chance that it can grow into cancer. And then we can't treat you because you're pregnant. This makes me feel like I can never have kids because I don't know that I'd be willing to have the possibility of getting pregnant and knowing that my baby might not make it. And so I kind of wanted to explore what was going to be the percentage percentage of people who had this procedure and then were able to get pregnant or whether they were be able to keep their baby to term or all of that. So I ended up posting about this whole situation on my Instagram and I was absolutely blown away at the amount of women who had messaged me and said, okay, trigger warning, I have to say this, this is super upsetting. The amount of women who messaged me and said that their babies were born preterm after they had their procedure and their babies did not make it. And the amount of people who sent me that message was unbelievable. The amount of people who told me they were never able to get pregnant. It was so crazy to see that as a result of this procedure. And so I started breaking it down and comparing the people who started messaging me. I was basically just asking who was able to get pregnant and all this. And so I started getting all these stories. And I realized at this point that this was actually a really common procedure. The LEAP procedure was something that a lot of women have already had. What ended up coming back as a result was a 50-50. 50% of people who messaged me were able to go on and have a normal birth. 50% of people, their babies did not make it or they were not able to get pregnant because of an incompetent cervix. Just all that that came with having the procedure as a side effect. I was freaking out and I was just like, I really don't know what to do because I just don't feel like, I don't know. I ended up like in this position where I was like, I don't know what's the right thing to do. Do I get the procedure? I just don't know. And so I just was like, I'm gonna sit on it for a minute and just, think about this whole thing. Ended up watching a lot of YouTube videos. That's what I was trying to do is like find everybody who had been through this exact same thing. And I came across this girl who had a video about her getting rid of her cervical dysplasia. It's what it's called. All different grades of it. There's sin one, sin two, sin three, and sin four. It's basically just like the likelihood of it growing into something bigger. Four is the most likely three two, one. And so I have a high grade sin two. And so there is a chance that it can grow into cancer. The chance is definitely there. And it does. it's a matter of five to 20 years it can form. And so you kind of never know what's, where exactly you're at. She ended up getting rid of her cervical dysplasia by basically really focusing on her immune system was the gist of it. She ended up doing a plant-based diet and a lot of supplements and things like that. They went and got all these supplements to boost my immune system because I had also been on antibiotics so many times last year and all of the surgeries. I'm a strep throat carrier, so I get strep throat three or four times a year from anyone who has it, anyone even walking by who has it, I just get it. And so I ended up on antibiotics a lot last year. If you have a weak immune system, that can contribute to this whole thing. And so I just went and loaded up on oil of oregano, vitamin C, garlic, and a few other things. And just to boost my immune system until I kind of just like make a decision on what I'm doing. Anyway, so the doctor ended up calling me back and she said, you know, I know that you really want to have another baby in the next few years. And I think that the best thing for us to do at this point is to do the cryotherapy. 
The cryotherapy is where they basically freeze off the cells instead of taking a layer of your cervix. I think this is the route that I'm going to take. I think this is where I'm at right now. I'm kind of surprised that she didn't offer me that as a solution in the beginning. I mean, the weirdest thing is they had scheduled my surgery um, to get the LEAP procedure done before I had even gotten to my appointment. And so that to me was the part that I was like, why are you scheduling it before even talking to me? And why is this such a an emergency like they had scheduled it for the beginning of March and I'm like this is just this whole thing is so weird because I still need time to make a decision especially if it's not cancer it's a pre-cancerous cells I shouldn't have to make this life-altering decision in just a few weeks and I didn't want to have to make the decision like right on the spot which is what they wanted for me to do at this point in time right now I am going to I think I'm going to go ahead and just get the cryotherapy. They told me that there's no side effects. There's nothing that can really go wrong. I said, can you maybe freeze it too long and can it damage my cervix? They were like, no, everything's on a timer. It will be fine. I wanted to share this because this whole thing really freaked me out when it first happened and I was really scared and I had no idea. Also made a Facebook group for this exact group of people who have any sort of cervical dysplasia or considering the LEAP procedure just to kind of share experiences. When you're feeling like so alone and you think that there's nobody else, people don't like talking about this kind of stuff publicly. It's like humiliating, right? To talk about this stuff, but you see how many people it happens to and I reached over over a thousand people in one day who had already been through this procedure. And so it's really common. And I just want people to know that there is a safe place that we can kind of talk about it and let people know if you have HPV, it just is a thing that happens. It doesn't make you a bad person. You shouldn't be embarrassed about it or you shouldn't feel afraid to talk about it because it is something 80% of people get. So if you don't, you're super lucky, but most people do get it at some point in their life. Like I said they just don't know that they have it. I hope that this video can help someone even if it just doesn't make you feel alone. I just wanted to share my experience with this whole thing. It's definitely been a nightmare. I feel so much better about it now, giving myself time to think about it, loading up on immunity things in the meantime, taking care of my body. This is obviously a sign to always keep your immune system in check. Just make sure you have a super healthy diet and you're getting everything you need for your body to have the best immune system possible because that's what a lot of this stuff does come down to. I will let you guys know on one of my next videos what ends up happening with my cryotherapy. If it's painful, I will let you guys know kind of what happens. I have to get my marina taken out when I get the procedure done. I will just let you know all the changes that come with that and just the whole thing. If it goes away by getting that done instead of the LEAP procedure, um, and all that. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel to get updates on my videos and hit the little notification bell to be notified. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.